Hello, hello, hello to everybody here. It's Dr. Wild again, talking about different topics and science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hmed.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Wild which topics do we have? Research, community education, care delivery hours, and achievement. The title the title of the article to review today is Adaptive Learning. Medical education need to use a long lens when preparing young doctors for careers in primary care. Nearly a decade ago, the passage of Affordable Care Act Galvani Montemental change in the United States healthcare system for patients and providers alike, beginning with expanded health care coverage for 20 million people in this country, the new model of care that formed the foundation of the ACA highlight the potential of team-based primary care to tackle preventive care and population medicine while also managing cost. From Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University Medical School, I want to remind to everybody who's listened to Dr. Wawile that we do most of the day these beautiful reviews. I continue straight away. This move toward team-based care may also reflect a demographic necessity. The Association of American Medical Colleges predicted a primary care physician shortage of between 21,100 and 55,200 physicians by 2032. Coupled with that prediction, it is estimated that in the same period the number of physician assistants and advanced practice registered nurses will double. It is likely then that son of care traditionally provide but physician will come from allied advanced practice providers. Faced with such challenges and change, how is medical education responding? How are curriculum being reinvented at the better provide future physicians with the skills needed to navigate the evolving demands of the profession? Our questions, Richard Stewart Stein, 79, thinks about the Great Deal in the early 2000s. Charles Stein, the Helen and Melvin Gordon, professor of medical education at Beth Israel Deacons Medical Center and the director of educational scholarship at Harvard Medical School, and his colleagues began to notice that Harvard Medical School students seem less engaged with the curriculum, calling the Google effort when it came to gain factual information. This is of a Acquiring facts with the stroke of a key was soon a cross purpose with the holistic approach to learning essential for developing clinical reason skills. In addition, a lecture heavy curriculum that placed basic science in the first two years, followed by more patient focused course in the third and fourth year, and wittingly reinforced the separation between scientists and clinical knowledge. Medical educators from Harvard Medical School weren't alone in noticing these trends. In 2004, the AAMC report that they designed content and form of medical education like a change in the biomedical science, the way healthcare was organized and delivered, and society expectations of medicine and healthcare. The organization called for more integrated interdisciplinary and patient centered curriculum. In 2007, under Transstein Leadership, Harvard Medical School hosted a conference sponsored by the AAMC and the Carl Chiro Institute for Education and Research at Beth Israel Deacons, which led to the creation of a national medical education research agenda and key star research into curriculum change. Traditionally, research in medical education had been more descriptive than scientific. Charles Stein helped a pioneer an empirical approach 
approach to medical education using experimental studies to test educational innovations and ensure that new approach to teaching will lead on more competent physicians and better patients' outcomes. Then came Education Physicians, a call for reform of medical school and residency published in 2010 by the Corning Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. The report appeared one century after Abraham Flesner, no critic of the United States medical education. The critic set the stage for the now familiar system of science-based academic medical education and university teaching hospital. The Corning study, by contrast, found that medical school curriculum nationwide were overly focused on measuring facts. The study outdoors draw the curricular like connection between formal acknowledge and experiential learning. The authors had also found inadequate attention to patients' population, healthcare delivery, and the effectiveness of various diagnostic and therapeutic interventions, and they worry that doctors in training did not fully understand the broader CV and advocacy roles of physicians. At Harvard Medical School, the Carney report kindled discussion over the share of undergraduate medical education and sparked evidence-based research on curriculum design. The results the pathway curriculum launched in 2015 won a more physiological levels. However, the Carney report prompted Harvard Medical School educators to reflect on what it means to be a well-trained physician when the practice of medicine is continually changing. It is my belief that we shouldn't be focus entirely on putting out a doctor who's perfectly trained to practice tomorrow, Charles Stein says. Our students are going to have a career that spans several decades. Whatever it is that they are prepared for one day, one of the residency is not going to be what they are going to do five years later, let alone 35 years later. Charles Dane is a proponent of what he calls the liberal arts equivalent of medicine and favors encouraging students to pursue a broad-based foundation upon which they can layer a specialization he cites his own training as an example. Although Charles Dane now practices internal medicine and pulmonology, as a medical student he took rotation in ophthalmology, sports medicine, and dermatology to complement the more specialist training he could receive during residency. Medicine is a profession and a career with a ethical, moral, and scientific obligations for how we prepare ourselves for this long career. We have to be able to continue our growth and development as learners, he says. One aspect of the evolving healthcare system that the Schwartz stay in mind when it comes to education the next generation of physicians is the right of team-based care. In a healthcare system in which doctors are likely to be supervising teams to other healthcare professionals, they are going to need to be able to recognize subtitles in data or cases being presented to them by others and to avoid framing bias, he explains. Charles Stain's also things it is important for nurturing essential habits of mind, curiosity, critical thinking, and integrity are trademark qualities, he says, that will allow the next generation of doctors to provide high-quality care no matter what the healthcare system of the future looks like. The future of learning at Harvard Medical School, Charles Stein says, will be both interactive and shaped by evidence-based research on what works best in medical education. The 
has the case of curriculum reform follow a tradition of professional introspection spawned by Flexners in a necessary a level of change that can come only from the top of the profession. In 2009, at the same time that Charles Stein and other leaders in medical education were reflecting on how to make the medical school curriculum more responsive to transformation in healthcare, Andrew Morris Singer, the second year internal medicine resident at Brigham and Women's Hospital, was thinking about how to meet medicine need for change in care delivery, especially in primary care. All right, guys, remember that you can download these beautiful reviews at the Magazine of Harvard Medical School at the website magazine.hmf.harvard.edu. This magazine has thousands of thousands of articles and you can download it, read it and get beautiful acknowledge. The title, remember, of the article that we reviewed today, it was Adaptive Learning and this article has been published by Andrew Dushin. He works at the Social Communication and External Relations at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.